the, the, the thickness of the wood is one inch but I normally use uh, five uh, six inch wood but they don't have six inch wood here this it's five and three quarters so if you can get it say one by five and three quarters six inches brilliant if you can get it one by seven inches that's fantastic it all depends on your edging your sill here all right so your sill determines the size of your wood this measures nine inches my sill what you do what you see down here is you mimic it you copy it and that goes up the top right and then i do a further whereby i take the wood and i go out to the side disregard this at the moment i do and bring the wood out to the side so that my curtain finishes off around the corner and it stops the light from coming in but at the moment i've got these I've got um, eyelid curtains on poles, which does that job very well, right? But now, this pelmet board that is up, I thought about it seriously. Should I take this down to, to make this a real demonstration and show you how it works? And I thought, mm, nah, too much work, right? Let me, you've got to use your imagination. Now, that one inch thickness of wood, which is butted up to the ceiling, right? So now we imagine this is the thickness of the wood up here and the rest of it's gone. So you're going to have to use your imagination because I'm not taking that down. Um, and then when you've put this wood up now, you've got to mitre your corners exactly the same to put the wood up. And that's where you're going to get in trouble to mitre in it. Now it's not really important if your mitering doesn't fit exactly because this bay window we're not constantly walking underneath it to see what's going on because normally when we put pelmet boards up we cover it with fabric and make it look all pretty and everything but bay windows such as this where you don't go under, uh, under it, patio doors you do, then it's a neat, uh, neater job. So I'm going to show you now underneath. look up here underneath we have the wood now now first I extended it and I put us because they didn't have any stock so we put this wood up which was the one this first one that we've got was a five and a half wood, and it wasn't enough because I needed it because I needed it to come out a bit further my curtains to come out further so then here as you see um, I put another wood in front so whereby I said to you you buy a uh, if you can get a nine inch wood get it and you do that whole thing in one one sweep but if you can't follow this example put another this one looks like it's a one by three inch in front of it and here you will see how we kind of mitered the corners to fit them in so you so you got to do a lot of jigging around you've got to do a lot of jigging around to actually get it done all right so now we've bolted it we found the beam up there and we've bolted it to the ceiling and then for luck you just put a, as, as much in as you can using the proper screws all right and that's very important the the, the proper um what's the word um raw plugs all right sometimes we use a metal one sometimes and we screw it in those are good but if you've got a car carpenter he'll tell you what to do or he'll do it he'll just get on with it after we have put the board up on the ceiling then we can now put as many tracks up as we like here you can see i've got a track for the net curtain a track for the net curtains i've got a track for the curtains itself Back to the curtain itself and if I wanted to I could also put up Roman blinds here if I wanted to somewhere along the line it depends you can do an awful lot but what I want to show now is this one inch lip that you've got to play with behind here 
is the one inch can you hear it it's velcro that's where we're going to hang the swags on that one inch that one inch is all you need to hang now how do we put the swags up here we go you've seen me made the swags on one of the lesson excuse the state at the moment so this is a swag right what i have done when i showed you it i put originally the velcro on this side for this type when we're butting your swags up to the ceiling we now need the velcro on the front right because it's going to fold over like that and that's how it's going to stay up to demonstrate this This is imitating the edgings up here. There's the Velcro, right? So we now put it to the edge of the board. And what happened is it turns round and when you've got it up, butted up to the ceiling, that's what you will see. And that's it really so we've got a nice straight edges uh, because you're now using the wood and what happened is you might have another um, um, swag underneath so the, as you see that the velcro is already there to accommodate for the other swags because not all the time you're going to butt them up you might overlap them then when you put them there and, and that one inch will take it so when it's up like that you put it up there like that then now, when you finish the job and you're satisfied with what you've got, you now staple it to make sure it stays. So the Velcro is there to help you organise yourself. And then when you're finished with it, you staple the whole lot and you say, I'm satisfied with that. You ain't coming down until I take you down. All right? Um, but when you put your your swag ups is now up to you now when you're doing the corners of a bay window you make those swags slightly smaller because it's going around the swag uh, the corner and it sometimes tends to go out of shape so 